Welcome to another episode of Science 9 Crash Courses. In this episode, we're going to talk about babies. As humans, we call them babies. Other organisms call them many different things like larvae, calf, kitten, cub, or even a duckling. In general, we call the next generation offspring. Having offspring allows us to pass our traits on to the next generation. These traits that are able to be passed from parent to offspring are called heritable characteristics. Most traits that we have are heritable, including the color of our eyes, skin, hair, or even the lack of it. Some traits like scars, however, are not heritable. So organisms must find a way to pass their genetic information to the next generation. We call these reproductive strategies and there are many different types. We are only going to talk about the two main types, asexual and sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, only one parent supplies the genetic information to the offspring. What this makes is an exact genetic duplicate, or a clone of the parent. Asexual reproduction has many advantages, including not having to find a mate to reproduce with. Reproduction can also occur very rapidly. Like in some bacteria, just after 10 hours, you will have 1 billion bacteria. And the final advantage for asexual reproduction is if the environment doesn't change, your offspring are going to be able to survive and reproduce just fine like the parents. There are, however, some downsides to reproducing asexually. For example, because you're a clone of your parent, if the environment changes, the offspring may not be able to survive as well. Now we're going to talk about the four main types of asexual reproduction in organisms. The most simple form of asexual reproduction is called binary fission. Many one-celled organisms, including bacteria, reproduce this way. The cell first duplicates all of its contents and then divides everything equally. It produces two new cells called daughter cells. These daughter cells are an exact genetic copy of the parent cell. Another form of asexual reproduction is through the form of asexual spores. Many fungi like mushrooms reproduce asexually using single-celled structures called spores that contain all the genetic information of the organism and are an exact genetic copy of the parent. These tiny little structures are typically spread by blowing through the wind. However, some asexual spores are able to swim through the water using a flagella that acts like a tail. Another example of asexual reproduction is called budding. Some organisms such as sea sponges and hydra reproduce this way. What happens is, a cell near the bottom of the organism produces a group of cells called a bud. When the bud matures and detaches itself, it becomes an independent organism all on its own. The last and one of the more complex ways of asexual reproduction is asexual reproduction in plants. Plants have specialized structures called meristems that are responsible for growth and repair of the plant. If the plant is not able to reproduce sexually with another organism of the same species, it must turn to asexual reproduction. An example of asexual reproduction in plants are sprouts on potatoes. Another example of asexual reproduction in plants are runners in strawberries. Both of these examples of asexual reproduction in plants produce exact genetic copies of the parent. Now let's switch gears and talk a little bit about sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction occurs when you have two parents that supply genetic information to the offspring. Sexual reproduction has two main advantages. The first is variation. Variation in your offspring could provide them with an advantage in a constantly changing environment. For example, in humans, there are 8 million different ways to rearrange the chromosomes in any cell. Times those 8 million combinations by two parents, and you get 64 trillion different possibilities. Another advantage of sexual reproduction is that you only have to contribute half of your genetic information to your offspring. This requires less energy, especially for the males of the species. There are, however, some disadvantages of reproducing sexually, like you need to be able to find a mate to actually reproduce with you. The second disadvantage is that it takes a long time to reproduce. And lastly, if the environment is relatively stable, you could be outcompeted by asexual organisms. Some organisms, however, have the best of both worlds and are capable of both sexual and asexual reproduction. For example, most molds reproduce asexually, but some can reproduce sexually if they come in contact with each other and produce structures called zygospores, which contain genetic information from both parents. Another simpler type of sexual reproduction is called bacterial conjugation, which is the transfer of genetic material from one bacteria to another resulting in new genetic combinations, but no new offspring are produced. Sexual reproduction in plants and animals may seem different, but it is essentially the same process. 
both of which require two gametes or sex cells to meet and to produce a single zygote. There are two main types of plants that reproduce sexually. They are angiosperms and gymnosperms. Angiosperms are simply flowering plants, while gymnosperms produce cones. The larger part of the flower in the middle, as seen in this picture here, is the female part of the flower called the pistil. It is made up of the stigma, or the top of the pistil, the styles going down the center, and the ovary which is found underneath. The structures that surround the pistil in the middle are the male part of the flower called the stamen. The stamen are made up of two parts, the top part which is called the anther which contains the pollen and the pollen grains, and the stalk going down called the filament. Fertilization begins when the pollen grain comes in contact with the stigma of another flower. A pollen tube is then formed and the genetic material is transferred to the egg in the ovary. The fertilized egg then goes on to become an embryo inside of a seed. Sexual reproduction in animals, however, is slightly different, and they have two different types of fertilization. Lots of animals have internal fertilization, which allows the egg and sperm to unite in a protected environment. Other organisms like fish have external fertilization, which allow the egg and sperm to unite outside of the organism's body. An advantage of this is that you're able to produce far more offspring at one time. Sadly, this crash course has now come to an end. Thank you for listening.